SAP Business One Solution Expert Team. And this is another video in a series of videos about the new SAP Business One mobile service app. In this video, I'm going to take and show you it from the perspective of the Business One client, how you set up the information that's required in Business One to make the service call and the other information work with the new mobile service app. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up an existing service call that I just created. So if you're familiar with the service call, you know that they're assigned to a business partner. The contact comes in from the business partner. And in this case, I've not only assigned it to a specific item, but a specific serial number. This serial number, 714, and so on. This is for item A0006, a Rainbow 1200 Laser Series printer. I have to have a subject where, in this case, the toner seems low. And then the rest of the information depends on how you've configured the service module. In this case, it's a telephone call and the problem type is break fix. When I pick the business partner, it fills in the address information. I can also fill out more remarks, more than the subject, and in this case, the service technician has done that. The other thing that I want to talk about is this is not a new feature, but you also have the ability on a service call to attach documents. And in this case, I've attached the actual printer service manual. That way, when the technician is out in the field and using the service mobile app, they'll also have access to the same manual. What's new about the mobile service app is really this scheduling tab. And it's here where I can assign a particular technician on a particular date and time. And I'm gonna do that, in this case, I'm gonna assign this call, call number 77 for Kona Enterprises to technician Tom Silva. I'm gonna go up to the data menu and click add a row. And then in here, I'm going to click the ellipse, and I'm going to pick Tom Silva. Now, Tom's in this list because he is defined as a role of technician when I click Choose. This call is I want to schedule for today, but I want to do it at 4 o'clock. So I'm going to do it at 1400 in 24-hour clock, and I'm going to do it for, thir excuse me, for 30 minutes. All right, so I've got this scheduled for Tom today from 2 o'clock to 2.30. And one other really important piece of information is this address description field. What I need to place in this is a valid address. In the case of valid, I mean so that my mapping tool on my iPhone in the mobile service app will be able to use this address field as an address and geolocate where this service call is located. In order to facilitate that, I've created a formatted search on this field that does a simple query that looks up the ship to addresses of this particular co uh, business partner, Kona Enterprises. I'm gonna pick the 223 Bay Street, and in that case, I'm gonna click update. Now, I have all the information I need on this service call I've assigned it to Tom Silva, and when he refreshes his mobile service app, he will see this call assigned to him. Now, if I wanted to, I could also go back here, do another add row, and I could assign a second or a third. In this case, I'm gonna take and assign Norm Abrams to the same call at the same time, at the same location. And using my formatted search, I'm gonna pick the same address. Okay, so in this case, and this is purely optional, I can assign multiple technicians to the same scheduling event. Now, it's important to realize that you can have multiple scheduling events across different dates and times, multiple technicians for one service call. And when we go into the mobile app, we're going to see it from the perspective of Tom Silva. With that, I'm going to click Update. Now, we'll look at it from the perspective of the mobile service app. What you see in front of you is an iPhone and the B1 service app. I'm Tom and I'm going to log on to the B1 service app. When I log in, I see today and I see the call at 2 o'clock, which is that call number 77 that we set up. And we can see it's got the information from the subject line as well as the address. I'm going to drill into it and look at the service call. Now, I'm only gonna look at the things that are pertinent to what we set up in the actual service call in Business One. And we can see that it's for that item, for the Rainbow 1200 Laser Series printer, and that specific printer, 
And the other thing that we can see is that it's got the address of 222 Bay Street, Toronto, which is what we put on that scheduling record. And to show you how the mapping feature works, I'm going to click on that address. And this is why we need a valid address. I'm now looking using the geolocation capabilities on my iPhone to plug in that address so I can tell Tom exactly where this service call is located at 222 Bay Street in Toronto, Ontario. So that's why that address is important. The other thing that we did when setting up that service call is remember we have the attachments and we put the printer service document as an attachment. So I'm going to click on the ellipse and it's going to pop up this and I can see I've got four options. One of them is the attachments. And I can see here in the attachment list is that attachment for the, and when I click on that, it will actually open that exact same document that we saw online in business one. Now the technician has full access to this information. So I'm actually going to take a, a quick photo just to show you how I can save an attachment so that when we get back in business one, we can see that attachment. I'm going to use the take photo feature and I'm actually going to take a photo of this barcode. I'm going to say use this photo. I'm going to go ahead and give it a name of UPC code and hit done. It's now going to take that attachment and attach it to the service call on the mobile app. And when it synchronizes with Business One, which is almost immediate, it's also going to take that graphic file and attach it to the service call in Business One. So I've seen where I can look at attachments as well as save attachments. Now I'm going to go through a very simplified process uh, of what's called check in and check out on this screen. When you show up at the site, if I hit the check in button and say yes, it's going to capture some information about a date and timestamp as well as a location code of where I actually checked in to this call. I then go about the service call. At the end of the service call, I do a check out and record similar information. I'm going to hit the check out button. Click yes. I've now recorded the fact that I've checked in, I've checked out. Using the geolocation capabilities of my phone, I'm going to capture the information that is sent back and it will be written onto that scheduling record, which we'll show you in a second when we get back to business one. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click next. I'm going to go ahead and click signature. I'm going to capture a signature. I'm going to click done. I'm going to close the ticket. That's important. I should get a message here that it's been closed. And with that, this service call is done. We'll go back to business one. So now that we're back in business one, I want to pull up that service call and see the impact of the data we captured in the B1 service mobile app. I'm going to open the service call record, go to the last record, and you can see here is this call, service call number 77. Now notice the status of this overall call is still open. And you th you're probably thinking to yourself, well, didn't we close that service call? No, what we closed was the scheduling record for Tom Silva. And you can see here, highlighted in gray, that this information, this record is actually closed. Now, you can also remember we assigned this to Norm Abrams. We didn't go through that process, so Norm Abrams' record is still open. So when you close a service call in the B1 service mobile SAP, it is going to leave the service call open, but close the individual scheduling record. Now, the other thing I want to show you is the attachments. Now, remember, we had attached earlier the Rainbow 1200 printer manual, but there are two new attachments. One of them is the file name called UPC code. And if I click on that and click display, I will see that actual camera image of that UPC code that I took in the mobile app. So when I did that and it saved it to the service call on the mobile app, it also synchronized that image back to the service call in business one. There's one more attachment on this as well called service call 77 sig, which is the signature that I captured also on the mobile app. So when I did that checkout process and captured the signature and said done and closed the actual scheduling record, I've also captured an image of the person's signature. That's information that gets passed also back to the service call. Now, the last thing I want to do is kind of look at that check-in, check-out process that happened in the service app. And here on this actual scheduling record, there's some information that we can't see, but I've written a query 
called service call check-in data. And if I look at the fields, this is against uh, the SCL6 record. I'm actually displaying that information of those two scheduled records. This one, the second one is for Tom Silva. I can see there's a field called check-in date and a check-in time, as well as a check-in longitude and a check-in latitude. Now there's also a check-out date and a check-out time. So when I did that check-in and check-out process, it captured this information both at check-in and at check-out. So that's the last bit of information that gets updated. This concludes the video and I appreciate your time.